All right, back again with a update on the audio projects. Um, you'll have to excuse the rather poor sound quality as I'm having to record this on the still camera, which is uh, a bit old and doesn't do the audio so well. Uh, because I sadly I discovered that my uh, my phone will not uh, stream Bluetooth and record video at the same time. <laughs> so I need me to test this. I need to do both. So yeah. Anyway, so I picked up um, one of these. Uh, uh, Bluetooth 4 audio receivers, which is a, uh, maybe it will, no, I'll just read it up to it, it's a CSR8630 uh, uh, Bluetooth 4 receiver. Um, the main guts of it is this little whiteboard here, and so that, that does all your Bluetooth stuff and everything else is, uh, this is a uh, 12 to 5 volt uh, step down regulator. Um, so you can run this off 12 volt, which is more applicable to my situation. And we've got a couple of audio filter caps, which hopefully filter out any any junk that uh, the Bluetooth produces. And a couple of secondaries. Um, yeah, uh, overall um, pretty good quality. Came in a came in a kit like this. Um, sadly, like no instructions apart from what's printed on the board and what I could do discern from some high res photos. Um, uh, unfortunately they the, some of the capacitors they sent me weren't as nice as the one pictured, like those are Elaine's which are really good and they sent me some other brand which I'm not familiar with. Um, still got the Nichicons uh, you probably won't focus on that. Still got the uh, Still got the Nichicon filter, audio filter capacitors, which is nice. Um, yeah. So for twenty-four dollars shipped to my door, it's, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, would have preferred less ambiguous instructions with the caps and all that, but I had it soldered up in fifteen minutes. So most of the components um, only go can only go in one place and can only go around one way, like. The boards do have, um, you know, they've got marking, they've got those little white marks to tell you which is the negative side of the capacitor, and, you know, the only thing I had to just double check was which leg on um, LEDs is the positive. Um, apart from that, uh, I did have to quickly look up uh, this little um, polypropylene uh, cap. It turns out to be non-polarised, so it doesn't matter which way you put it in. Yeah. Um, in the bag also, this was one little confusing thing is, the board itself uh, came with, this is its um, filter capacitor um, for the 5 volt and that is a, um, a 470 microfarad but the one they provided me was 47 um, microfarads so <laughs> I don't know why they're such drastically different values um, these are much high voltage though so Heck fine on both, but but yeah. So I eventually plan to um, hear this with uh, this little guy, which is uh, one of the um, TDA uh, 2021s off eBay. Um, really good little units, and uh, again a bit of variation in what they what they show you and what they give you. Um, this this design picture has got those two large caps, and this one's just got a bank of seven little ones. Um, everything else is very, very similar. Some um, uh, resistors in different places, but overall, like, still really good quality. So yeah, it's just uh, I wish the eBay sellers were a bit more um, diligent in uh, how they uh, photograph, update, update the photographs on their products. But I had that running earlier, and that's a really good, good one. It's uh, got all the things I usually look for: an actual heatsink on the uh, the T. T, uh, T class amp chip itself. Um, I don't. I wouldn't recommend buying one without it. Um, do look out for units that use the actual chassis as a heatsink because that's a perfectly good solution. But you just need to double check that it's actually doing that. It's not just sitting there roasting itself. Um, nice big bank of filter caps. Always good. Um, the iron, iron. Uh, uh, sorry, the um, the ferrite chokes um, could be probably a bit bigger, but they're all right. Um, Speaker protection relays, always something to look out for. Um, 
just means it's much higher quality. When you turn it on, it's going to have a soft start. The relays are, go are going to engage, and it's not going to have any pops or nasty things. And if you know if something does ever go wrong, it's not going to fry your, you know, probably more valuable speakers because this, these things are only 25 bucks. So yeah, good little units these. I um, might give a demo of that later on, but let's get back to the main event. All right. So I've just got uh, that paired with the phone. It's going in it. It's going into this SMSL, and then it's going to some uh, ooh, some Philips vintage Philips speakers. So let's get the show on the road. So we've just got some Nick Cave playing. There's not a lot of point in me playing much of that because the it's because the mic on this camera is not not very good. Um, but yeah, I could probably say that the output of this is about as strong as I would expect from the phone. Maybe a bit better um, sound quality. You know, if you in a blind test, I probably couldn't tell the difference between going through the Bluetooth and through the output of the phone. Um, yeah, really good little units. Anyway, that's me, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>